Hey there, I'm Annie Dickerson. And I'm Susan Elliott. And on today's show, boy, oh boy, we have a really exciting one for you. This is one of my personal mentors. Her name is Karen Chong. And I first found Karen, gosh, about actually about 18 months ago, somebody recommended her frequency work to me. I had no idea what that meant at the time. And honestly, I first listened to her podcast and I was like, I have no idea what she's talking about. And I just put it away and thought, this isn't for me. And lo and behold, as the months went by, you know, as things do, things started to come up in in the business and in my life that I was challenged with. And all of a sudden, by the end of uh, last year, I was like, wait a second whatever happened to that Karen lady? (laughs) And not thinking that she was the answer, but just something was prodding me like, oh, go, go listen to that again. So I did. And at the time I was experiencing a lot of anxiety, which is not normal for me. Um, But I was experiencing a lot of anxiety that was kind of holding me back. I didn't know what to do with it. And through listening to her podcast and trying her GFCs, her group frequency calibrations, which she'll talk more about in the conversation. Um, I gave them a try and oh my goodness, they changed my life. And so I've been working at a deep advanced level with Karen um, ever since. I've been on multiple retreats with her. And this is this is why I'm so excited to bring this work to this podcast and to you, the listener, because I've found it to be one of the most life-changing things for me. And so I'm eager to hear what you think and for you to try it out too. And I've been seeing this from the outside for the last 18 months, I suppose. So (laughs) seeing you like start to do all this work and then go on these bigger and bigger retreats. And it's like kind of and and hearing you know about your morning meditations or but they were not really meditations but they're doing this work and it's it's been really neat as a friend to sit next to you and sort of see your commitment and actually see how you've kind of gotten deeper into the into the topic so i am so curious i was so curious to meet karen today and she shocked me in that she was one of the funnest guests we've ever had and the more down to earth people that just was like Oh, I like this lady. Like I I like I like what she's throwing out here right now. And it it just like resonated with me in a way that I didn't expect. And I, in particular, I want the listeners to listen out for that you know, she started her journey into this work that is hard to understand if you just like read it in a byline of someone's bio, right? But she started it because she was an entrepreneur in real estate, in fact. And so she is this person that was like, I need to do things differently. I'm not going to just go by the default path that, you know, most Americans do, most people do in this world and they get a job and they save for retirement and they cross their fingers. She started a business and it was great. It was growing really well, but she continued to feel like not successful in her own personal life and in the business, despite like what was on paper. And I think that there's so many of us who actually are pretty good. We're pretty successful. We've achieved a lot of really neat things, but we're still finding that like something doesn't feel right. And I don't think that we would be in this place. I don't think Karen would be offering what she's offering if we weren't the kind of people to just like continue to ask the next question. And that's the biggest value that I got from Karen is like what that led her to. And it's so inspiring to think that like, it's actually not that complicated for me to, you know, ask similar questions and go down that similar path. Mm -hmm. And through doing this work, I kid you not, I mean, it almost seems trite to say that it has changed my life, but it really has. I feel like before there were so many walls I'd hit up against and be like, I don't know how to do that. I'm not sure I can do that. And now with access to this work, I'm like, doesn't matter. Throw it at me. I can handle it. It's just probably a distortion pattern or two that I've got in the way, but I can work through that. I know how to work through that. And it's so empowering to know that whatever life throws at me, I can I can navigate through it. And so we're so excited for you to experience um, this conversation and to dig in further. But first, before we do, I just wanted to share, you know, these retreats that I've been on, you know, I've been on the spiritual path for, for quite some time. And I find that one of the hardest things is is not having people in my day-to-day life who understand 
what I'm with the work that I'm doing. And so I try to explain it. It's like this, or the chiropractic work that I do, or this frequency work that I do. And I can only get so deep with them because they've never done it themselves. And what I find is when I go on these retreats, like I just went on um, this two week, epic two week uh, retreat in Scotland with Karen and her tribe. And it was 50 of us and everybody knew the work, loved the work, had seen the impact of the work in their lives. And it just leads to a different level of conversation. And so when you think about money and finances and investing, it's the same thing. You might not have people around you who know what an accredited investor is, who knows what a real estate syndication is, who's passionate about building their wealth and living a, a life by design and reaching financial freedom. That might not be part of their vocabulary. And so that's why we've created the Good Egg Investor Club as a tribe, as a community of people all passionate about the same things. And so through the Good Egg Investor Club, we invest together in these commercial real estate assets and we support each other in our journey to financial freedom. So if that piques your interest, we invite you to join. Just go to goodegginvestments.com slash invest. All right, with that, let's dive into our conversation with Karen Chong. Karen, welcome to the show. How are you today? I am super great and I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness, we are so excited to have you here. When I told my kids that we were gonna have you on the show today, they were like, oh, Karen's coming? show you're a super celebrity <laughs> in our household and you know I've tried a lot of things over the years um, and it's been a big result of me being in business starting my own business I never thought that it would be a spiritual journey a spiritual path but being an entrepreneur is so challenging on so many fronts it forces you to look yeah. at yourself from every different angle and your partnership or partnerships with others and your clients it just it's like this oven that's just you're just in this heat all the time and so it forced me to then look outside of myself for these different ways that I could um, kind of uh, grow um, in a new way than I had before and so I know this is a, a common thing for people, not necessarily the entrepreneurship, but finding a pain point or hitting a ceiling and then looking beyond to find what else is out there. And I know you, this is part of your story as well. So let's start there is take us back to that, that time when you were, you felt like you were walking through the fire and you didn't know where else to turn. And thus it started you on this path. Start there. Yeah. Well, I've had a number of those <laughs> for good or for bad, right? We all go through the fire in different ways. But I think probably the thing that um, led me to frequency work specifically, I mean, I'd been on a, on, a, on a path of seeking for about 25 years, okay, before I even heard of what frequency work was, which is the work that I do. And the reason I started on that path was because I had a health crisis. So I had, you know, the equivalent of like really severe, like mosquito bites from underneath my chin all the way to my ankles. And I was just itching all the time and I couldn't sleep. And I um, basically became um, suicidal at that point. And then I happened to, through my aunt, find an acupuncturist. I was living in New York City at the time, had been doing all these different modalities to try and resolve it. It didn't work. So then I ended up um, going to see uh, my aunt in Alberta, Canada, of all places, to see an acupuncturist who who basically could see on the energetic level. And from that point and into five weeks later, he shifted me from being like this hot mess, like physically and also suicide emotionally wise, into like a totally different person. And so that catalyzed my journey of my spiritual seeking. I was like, what is there beyond the scene that causes the physical to be the way it is? So fast forward many, many years, like I said, almost two and a half decades. And the thing that I was at is that Chris and I were real estate agents, actually, in San Francisco. 
so very close to where you guys are. And we had our own uh, practice. And on the outside, we looked really successful. Okay, so we had a small team. Our uh, our business was like 88% referral based. We only worked with people we really enjoyed. They refer their friends who were also lovely. We were top producers in the city. So we're making a lot of money. And despite all of this external trappings of, wow, your life looks amazing, uh, I was running really, really deep patterns of scarcity. So meaning I was always, always afraid that we would not have enough. And it didn't matter how much was in our bank account. It didn't matter how much cushion there was. I was always spreadsheeting every night how much cushion we had before we'd have to move in with my parents. <laughs> you know, so I was just like, what is going on? And it wouldn't matter that Chris would be like, babe, like, we're fine. Like, it's going to be, you know, a year, okay, more <laughs> more even having to go there without even selling the house. We're going to be fine. But it didn't matter because internally it felt like we would never had enough. And so I would just drive our team to produce more because I was sitting in my own fear. And, you know, like I said, I've been on this, you know, spiritual journey for two and a half decades. So I wasn't just like sitting there hoping something would change. I mean, I was using all the tools that I had because I, I enjoy using tools. I, I find them fascinating to see like, well, is this going to work? Let's try it, right? So I was doing all my personal development stuff, you know, which is sort of like a more traditional path. And then, you know, I was exploring all these different energetic modalities, you know, including network spinal analysis and a whole bunch of other things that were more like sort of out there in left field and implementing them in our business. So our business was doing really well, but I was stuck. Does that make sense? So here I was implementing all these different things. And I'm like, something is very, very wrong because I feel terrified that we're not going to have enough in the very short term. So that prompted the question, what is it within me that is causing this state of fear and this state of scarcity? Why do I keep creating this feeling? And why are my, these tools that I'm using not helping? And why is it that in our business, although we're doing very well, and you know a lot of people would envy what we have, why is it that other agents who you know are not very, let's call it, uh, thoughtful about their business or intentional or doing that much for their clients, why are they, they outproducing us? Why are they getting more sales? Like, why are we hitting the ceiling? Right? So those were my questions. And then sometimes when you ask questions like this, the universe answers. And my answer came in the form of frequency work in the sense that I'd come back from a journey, which we won't get into right now, to France that I'd taken. And I was sitting in my acupuncturist's office. I just received acupuncture. And she said to me, I remember I was getting off the table and she said to me, have you ever heard of frequency work? And as soon as she said those words, it's like, that scene in the matrix, you know, with the bullets and like time goes slow and he's like doing the thing. It was kind of like my very <laughs> mundane version of that, where it literally time felt like it slowed down and I could see like every angle of the room as I was turning. And I knew in that moment, I don't, but I need to, because that is the answer to the question that I've been asking. So that was where I was. And then from then on, it began my journey in terms of releasing what I call distortion patterns. Yeah. I love that you started like it, the, the real estate aspect, the entrepreneurial aspect, like what Annie just mentioned, that is like, it's kind of like the baby step into seeking a little bit. It's the baby step into looking into, yeah. is there a different way for me to embody my full self in this life? And maybe we're just yeah. really deploying extra capital that we made that year and we're bored with stock market. <laughs> maybe that's where it starts. But but I love that you you kind of, the, the entrepreneurial path, the investor path, th these are all like the entryways into it. And I don't think, I wonder if the listener is thinking like, how do I know when that deep moment happens to me? Will I miss it? Like, will I, like, will, will the matrix moment pass me by? And I think that it just begins by, I hear you saying you started to ask questions. You started to implement things in your business, yet you still kind of, there still was misalignment in some ways. And so I think the listener can take away from that of just, you know, asking these questions in any part of your life is the fantastic way to begin. Absolutely. And the funny thing is, what I've noticed in my life is that if you really are curious about what the answer is, life isn't going to just give you one shot. You know what I mean? Like we always think like, oh my God, what if I miss the thing? Like what if I miss 
the entry point to awakening, right? <laughs> and then, I'm so happy to hear you say this. Because I'm so happy. I, I am that listener thinking like, am I missing my aha moments? No, no. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're not. Because life is just going to, I call it, um, I love this analogy. It's called, I call it feather brick truck. So if you're meant to learn a lesson in its lifetime, at first, when you ask the question, it'll give you a little feather. It's like, hey, pay attention, right? So it's not going to look like a crisis. It's just going to be like a friend saying like, hey, I've noticed that this is happening for you. Maybe you want to look at that. And here's this resource. Maybe you want to check into it. And then if you ignore it, right, it gets a little louder and it becomes more like a brick, right? So maybe you're not like on death's door, but like you break your leg, right? So now you're lying in bed and you're thinking to yourself, oh God, now I can't, whatever. And you start to look at podcasts because you're lying in bed and you're bored, right? And then something opens. And then if you don't listen to that, then like the truck will come by and smack you, you know, fully, where, you know, it kind of looks more like a crisis, like what I had at the very beginning, which was a health crisis, right? So for some of us, it's a health crisis. For some of us, it's a relationship crisis. For some of us, it's a death. For some of us, it's, you know, a money crisis, right? So a lot of people have to get to the point sometimes for the crisis to happen, to begin in that journey of that exploration of that internal um, growth, that internal um, path that you know that you are called to, but you're not sure exactly what that means and how it's going to look and what it should look like and who's going to help you, but you know that it calls to you in some way. So I would say, don't worry about it. Just pay attention to the feathers, the bricks, and then the truck is kind of hard to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, The feather, the brick, the truck. I love that. And looking back, I'm sure it's always easy to find. You're like, oh, yeah, that was the feather. Yeah. That was the brick. <laughs> but when you're going through it, unless you're really paying attention, it's easy to miss. And so mm -hmm. you had many of those moments and you, you were down this spiritual path seeking trying all these different things and you were seeing some results and then you had this matrix moment where you mm -hmm. somehow knew you were like wait there's some alignment here I don't know what this is mm -hmm. so I know that now frequency work is a huge part of what you do it is what you do so mm -hmm. talk, talk us through you know I know you say everything is frequencies whether yeah. it's finding inner peace, abundance, fulfillment, or on the flip side, the anxiety and the loneliness, everything is all comes down to it's not just a state of mind, but it's frequencies. So walk mm -hmm. us through that. What exactly does that mean? And what is yeah. frequency work? Yeah. So in my perspective of the world, and you know, a lot of scientists will say this as well, everything is vibrating, right? And so the rate of vibration is the thing that determines what form something will take. So if you take something really physical, like water, for example, right? So when the molecular vibrational rate is higher, then it be, it's steam. And when that molecular vibrational rate slows down, it becomes liquid water. And when that slows down even more, it becomes ice or solid or density. So if you take that same idea and extrapolate it, right, to consciousness, which is an extraordinarily highly vibrating Let's call it thing, for lack of a better word. So consciousness, or the oneness, or pure source, the thing that creates everything, from which everything comes and to which everything returns, whatever you want to call that, that is vibrating at an extraordinarily high rate. We cannot yet measure it with our physical tools. When that consciousness drops in vibration, just like the water, frequencies are created or are there, exist. And when that vibration slows down even more, it becomes what we talk about as energy. And when that slows down even more, that becomes the physical or your thoughts, your feelings, and even the physicalness like the chair, right? So to me, everything is vibrating. And the thing is, we always have this illusion, or at least I did, that you know we do things in our physical lives. And when we change those things, things on spirit level will change. But it's actually the inverse. The higher vibrating order dictates the lower vibrating order. So to me, everything in your life is a reflection of what happens at frequency level first. So if you change things at frequency level, your physical reality will change around that almost like extraordinarily quickly. I will say almost instantly, but it depends on how much distortion you have. So it's kind of amazing what you can experience when that changes, or, or not that, but when things change at that level. So the question that I 
can almost hear the audience asking is like, well, what's this distortion thing that you just mentioned back there a little bit? <laughs> That's screwing up my life. And how do I know I have one? Well, you, you know you have a distortion pattern where you get stuck in the same place over and over again. Just like with me back at that time where I was like stuck in scarcity all the time, even though I had a lot, that's an indication of a distortion pattern. It's like, for example, you know, it's like um, people who seem to have everything all sorted, but there's one part of their lives that there's a pain point. Like, you know, for people who seem to have it all, but yet can't get into an intimate relationship that they find really nourishing or that helps them to expand or that type of thing, or maybe it's their physical health, health, whatever it is, or even in certain relationships, you always get caught in the same pattern. You'll know it because your pain point is that, and you talk about it a lot, and you spend a lot of money trying to relieve it. <laughs> That's how you know that you're experiencing a distortion pattern, okay? Or your friends say to you, like, hey, have you noticed that you're always doing this thing? Or you go to the self-improvement thing to try and relieve the thing that it is that you're stuck with. So it's where you get stuck. That's how you know you have a distortion. And a distortion is caused by things like your lineage or what your ancestors have experienced. So, you know, the field of epigenetics is starting to explore what your ancestors have experienced and how it affects how your genes express and the choices you make. You know, your religious uh, conditioning, your cultural conditioning, your, um, you know, that type of thing, your past lives, all those things impact the distortions that you experience now in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely, in the time that I've been working with you, I've come to realize that I don't just have one distortion or a handful of distortions. I have lots and lots and lots of distortions. Yeah. And I think we all do. And it's the beauty of this existence is we get to discover those and work through those and transcend those. Mm -hmm. And um, as you mentioned, frequency work is one of the, the fastest and most effective ways that you've found um, to do that. And I certainly found that out for myself, too, as, as I've done this work alongside you. Um, and I want to just mention that one of the reasons I've tried lots of different meditations, guided, silent over the years, <laughs> because it was something I was supposed to do. You know, people were like this whole <laughs> mindfulness thing, you're supposed to do yeah. it. You know, help with your growth and blah, 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 blah. Routine, Annie. Yeah, yeah. Like, I yeah. know. So I would sit there, I'd set my timer, I'd close my eyes and try to be <laughs> present. All my to-do list stuff would come in uh -huh. or I'd fall asleep. I'd fall asleep all the time. And then I felt like such a failure. I was like, I just wasted all this time. I can't even really check this thing off my list. Like, what am I doing here? This is the worst. I hate this. Until I discovered the work that you do. And I was so relieved and so pleasantly surprised because at the beginning of many of the sessions, you say, you know, if you fall asleep, that's okay. And I was like, what? I can, I have permission <laughs> to fall asleep during this thing. So tell me, Karen, you're, you're welcome. It. You're welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hear when you say that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, this can still work when I'm sleeping. And in fact, you go yeah. so far as to say that it can actually be a good thing when you yeah. fall asleep. So talk to yeah. us about a, a GFC, a group frequency calibration. What is that? Yeah. And why is it that falling asleep can be a good thing? Yeah. So I just want to point out, I'm laughing because that was totally my experience with meditation. I did it, you know, because everyone was like, it's supposed to improve your focus. It's supposed to relieve your stress. It's supposed to make you more, I don't know, whatever the thingy is they tell you, right? So I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I should do that because clearly, you know, like being like sort of an overachiever type, I was just like, well, let's do the thing that everyone says is supposed to make you better. And then I would sit there and I would be so irritated because I'd be like thinking about all the things I wasn't doing when I was sitting there in meditation. And then I wasn't less stressed rest after. So I totally hear. Okay. So knowing that that's where I came from, I didn't, um, it's interesting what happens when I, you do a group frequency calibration, which is a version of meditation. 
Okay, so for me, a meditation is not required for you to be sitting on a cushion, stationary, with like a candle burning, and you wearing white. Okay, it's not required. A meditation to me has to do with your state of internal stillness. So it could be something like sleep any. So one of the things that happens sometimes, because the frequency resonance that we're in when I'm giving a group frequency calibration, whether you're aware of it or not, is high for some people in the sense that your conscious mind can't stay in that resonance. So your higher self will kind of push you into sleep so that you can release some of your distortion patterns in a way that's more efficient, okay? So it's totally okay if you fall asleep. And in fact, what that indicates to you is that the resonance is too high for you to integrate. So if that happens, then I would recommend that you listen to the GFC again until you can maintain conscious awareness. Okay, so that's one thing about sleep. And it's a really effective way, actually, to purge a lot of distortion. Some people after GFC will sleep a lot because that's how their body, their um, body, not just their physical body, but their mental and emotional body, will integrate the work. And it makes it faster. Some people like to like walk when they listen to the GFC. You know what I mean? They they're they're outside. They've you know they carve out the twenty or twenty five minutes, and they're listening to it as they walk. Fantastic, because it all has to do with the internal state of stillness, right? So some people will do something like like some people find vacuuming very soothing. Okay, I'm not one of those people, but like you know, or like flower arranging. Right? It doesn't require that you're stationary, just that you're in a state where you can be present and internally focused. Not driving, please do not drive when you listen to this, because you go into a slightly altered state, which is not really great for like keeping yourself and other people safe. Right? So please don't drive when you're listening to a GSC. However it doesn't require that you're still. That's so good to know. When you said like the thing that you like to do, sometimes I just like bake uncontrollably. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, how, like, I just feel the need to like, let everybody know to not come in the kitchen so I can just do the thing. And um, yeah. To, yeah. To sometimes know that I we're like, we can work on evolution a lot, like yeah. within our own lives. And you don't have to like create this altered persona that you have to carve out and something you have to be like, I can be Susan in this state a little bit, just not driving and work on this. Yeah, totally. And sometimes I, I remember for me, like sometimes like, just like you, I like to cook. So I wouldn't be doing anything over heat, for example. Right. But I would just be, I don't know, whatever, you know, it's like 5 million steps to cooking. So, you know, whatever I was doing, but it was um, it's kind of for some people being still, is not helpful. Now, for some people, they like stillness, right? Because they they like to sit and they like to come into a space or they like to lie down because it's a place where they feel like supported and they don't feel as, you know what I mean? Like they, it like takes them out of the busyness of their day. So they feel supported in that. Great, do that, you know? And um, so I would say that as your journey um, with frequency work continues and your vibrational level rises, what you need to do to be present in a GFC changes. So you can come into the space of more stillness without needing to do as many things. You can sit and it doesn't feel like you're just waiting for the clock to go. You know, you're like, okay, let's just get, let's haul through the distortion patterns to get over with, right? It's more like you can just be in it. And you can, and the thing is about frequency work is that a lot of people in our culture have this thing with spiritual awakening, especially with gurus. It's like, I am broken. I need to be saved. I need to be awakened and I can't do it. So you're going to do it for me because I can't. Okay. That's totally BS. And it's completely disempowering. You have free will. You are in charge of your own journey. No one else can do it for you. Okay. So whilst that might be intimidating and like nerve wracking for some people, it's glorious because the, it's yours. So when you have whatever you have in terms of your experience and in terms of becoming better, feeling better, being better, like just starting to get really freaking bright, you did it. No one did it but you. Meaning, yes, I help, but it's you doing the work and it requires self-awareness to do it. You know what I mean? It's not just like, you you know, someone waves a wand over you. That's not how change happens. You have to take accountability for the patterns that you run and decide, I don't want those anymore. And that's a really empowering thing that I think is missing in a lot of the sort of like spiritual movements. The thing is, we are in charge of our own awakening. It is time now for us to find the tools, find the means to in which to raise your vibration so that not only do you you know, spiritual awakening might not be for everyone. You don't have to. You can just have your life be a hell of a lot better. That's also great, right? So let's do that. 
Well, I can I can a hundred percent attest to the empowerment myself because that's been my experience. I started out at the beginning, trying to just sit down, set a timer for even five minutes. I could not find five minutes out of my day to do a meditation, and <laughs> you know they always have have you do like a body scan and you start yeah. with your head and you kind of like notice down to your neck to your arms and I could not even get through my arms <laughs> without my mind wandering and then I feel bad about it. But then, yeah. you know, you mentioned with the GFC, it's, you know, sometimes 20, 25 minutes. And I remember at the beginning when I started, I was like, wow, that seems like a really long time, 20 minutes to sit and do a guided meditation. And I would do one maybe every few days. And I was like, oh, this is kind of good. And that it was because I was integrating those frequencies and the stillness was starting to come in. And I was eventually able to now I could do my whole I scan my whole body be present whichever way toe to head head to toe inside out doesn't matter but I can be there for the whole thing be present for the whole thing because I've been able to find that stillness yeah. and it's so empowering just like you said to know that wow I went through that journey I did that I started with five minutes couldn't sit still for five minutes and now you know in the in the time leading up to some of the retreats that I've been on with you um, I was doing three, four hours of GFCs <laughs> a day. I just could not get enough of that sense of stillness. It is just, it is the most amazing thing. But I want to, speaking of time, because I know that you had a very impactful, somewhere along this journey, I don't know exactly where, but you had a really um earth shattering, I'll say, um, experience where you had a nine hour meditation that yeah. changed everything for you. So tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So I just want to back up and say, if you'd said to me like six or seven years ago, this is what you would be doing, I would have laughed. I would have been like <laughs> crazy, whatever, <laughs> you know, like this, this same with me, with me <laughs> investing, same. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So it wasn't like, you know, this is part of my like life plan. Okay. <laughs> and I was the type of person who had a life plan. Okay? <laughs> I just want to put that out there. So anyway, um, you know, I am of Chinese descent. So I had like a very structured approach to the world and I was a very controlling person. And thankfully that is an old version of me. But anyway, to answer your question, I had gone to uh, a retreat. So this is like about two years after doing frequency work. So I'm kind of like you, Annie, right? So once I find something that works, I do it, right? And I'm not afraid to do it. Like, so I'm going to put in the work. I'm not just going to be like hoping that something's going to work and not do it. I'm actually going to do the thing, right? So I was just like, and the reason I knew it worked is because I had that sense of peace, right? So I was like, you know, I just started feeling more calm within myself. And I remember one night Chris said to me, have you noticed you haven't spreadsheeted for like at least a couple of weeks. And I'm like, oh my God, I haven't spreadsheeted for a <laughs> <laughs> My little spreadsheet you. mania. Thank anyway, you, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like all my to-do lists were in spreadsheets. All right. So just let's be really clear about what my life was like. I know. Anyway. Oh yeah. I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So I'd been doing this a um, uh, different form of frequency work for a little bit, for like I said, intensively for two years, because I just wanted to feel better. You know what I mean? I wasn't like trying to get an outcome. I was like, can I just please not be a stress ball? Can I please like go over the scarcity? Can I just for, like relax for a freaking second here and like play? You know what I mean? I just wanted that, right? That's all I wanted. And so anyway, I ended up going to this um, retreat. Now I'm a growth oriented person. I enjoy growth. It's interesting to me and I'm curious. I'm like, well, what's this thing? And does it work? And how is that going to integrate with my life? So Anyhow, I went to this retreat in Sedona, and it was, I think, something called Piercing the Veil of the Absolute. And to be honest, Susan, and any, I didn't know what the hell that meant. I was like, I don't even know what that means, but I just know that I need to go, right? I just, it was just this thing. I'd done enough work with myself at, at that time that I was just like, I know when I feel the pull towards something. Just like, you know, how at the beginning, Susan, you're like, I, I don't want to miss the thing. What's amazing about getting clearer and clearer in terms of releasing your distortion patterns and rising your, in your vibration is you realize more clearly when things are being presented for you to follow. At least that's my experience. You can so, find the feathers more easily. Yes, exactly. The feathers are like, hello. <laughs> way more easily. Exactly. So I knew I had to go. And the funny thing was I was in such resistance to it as like the thing came because it was like a 12 day retreat. So anybody out there who's a small business owner knows what it takes to leave your business for 12 days and go offline plus travel. 
Okay. So I was just like, okay, I have to, so, okay, I'm going to go to this thing for 12 days. I'm going to be offline. The business is going on. And okay. And I had more and more resistance as I went along. And I was like, I knew enough at that point that the stronger the resistance, I knew I had to go. I was like, there is so much ego mind resistance to this freaking retreat. I have to go to this thing and find out what it is. So I go to the retreat and I get there and I'm an, an aware enough at this point because you know my intuition has gotten clearer that the field of the retreat itself, meaning in this room with the people who are there ostensibly to do this work, was unstable. There was a lot of like mind stuff, a lot of like peacocking, you know, like people being like, I am so awake. And I'm like, if we're supposed to be merging with the field of the infinite, I don't know. It doesn't seem like this ego mind field is that, you know, it's it's too strong, you know what I mean, for us to be able to be in the resonance to act at that state. So I decided, now this is very weird for me. So I am of Chinese descent. I just paid for the freaking 12-day retreat. I cleared my calendar for the 12-day retreat. I have delegated. I have done all the things. And I am thinking to myself, I shouldn't be here. And I'm like, what? I never think I shouldn't be there. I'm supposed to be the good student. I take notes. I practice the thing. That's my job. You know what I mean? <laughs> As a good Chinese person, right? Oh, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway I... I had this knowing, I was like, I am not supposed to be here. I, I don't, I'm not supposed to be in this class. So I decided to not go to the 12 day thing, which was like insanity for me at the time. And I decided, okay, well, I'm here for the 12 days. I, this is really odd. Like I've, I never have 12 days free. Like it doesn't happen in my life uh, with something unplanned, like, you know, not without like a bunch, a thing, bunch of things planned. So I decide that I'm going to meditate on my own. And I'm like, I'm going to do what they have said they're going to do on my own. I don't even know exactly how I'm going to do that, but I'm just going to try. So there I was in my little studio apartment in Sedona. And I started this meditation with the very loose intention of wanting to pierce the veil of the absolute. Okay, into the absolute, meaning into oneness. And I was like, I'm not sure how the hell that's going to happen. But I'm just going to try. And I'm just going to trust for some reason that that's going to happen in some way. And if not, then it'll be revealed to me. Don't ask me how I knew that I would know that. But I just, for some reason in that moment, did. So I started this meditation. I did not think it was going to be nine hours. I didn't think it was going to be anything. I just sat on the couch and started meditating. And what I did was, I was like, okay, I know intuitively that I need to raise my resonance. So let's just do that. So I, for some reason, in that moment could, and I could feel myself passing through different resonance levels. And so for me, I felt at first the resonance of light clearly, like not just what you see with your eyeballs, but like, it's hard to describe this, but the feeling of the extensiveness of light and all the information that it carries and what's transmitted through it. And I could feel myself rising through it. And then I rose through another layer. I just knew I had another layer. Don't ask me how. I just knew, like, just like, you know, anything that when I got to this layer, it was just love. And it wasn't human love. Like, I'll love you if you love me. If you do this, then I'll give you love. You know, maybe you withhold love. None of that. It was just unbelievable love. And as I rose higher in the resonance of love, it felt like my heart was exploding. I was just like, oh my God, this is so intense and amazing. And then I hit the layer of consciousness which was just awareness, just this vast awareness. And then I hit a ceiling. I was like, it's almost like I literally, with my head, was hitting a glass ceiling. I was like, what? what's this? And so because I'm sort of, as a person, kind of determined, I was like, "What? so what's the ceiling and what's beyond the ceiling? <laughs> like, why do I keep hitting it? Like, what's going on? And so I stayed there for a while and I realized that I had to surrender. So again, Chinese background. Surrender is not part of my vocabulary. <laughs> it's not like really how I've been raised. <laughs> it's not the paradigm of success in which I embodied at that time. But I knew in that moment I had to surrender. And I had to surrender who I was, which was absolutely terrifying for me. Because I was like, whoa, 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 what if I go insane? Like, what, what does that mean? And then I stopped thinking at some point. I was like, I kind of got to this point that I knew within myself it didn't matter, that I knew that where I was going was where I was going. And the who I thought I was 
wasn't important compared to the the infiniteness of what I was. I just knew I, I have to go there. I don't know why. And as soon as I like for real surrendered, not for an outcome, not because I was trying to get anywhere, but just like took so much courage. It's people think surrender is easy for control freak. It's not easy. Okay, it's the opposite of easy. And so I did it. And then all of a sudden I could feel this expansion. And then I was in this space where I was everything and everything was me. And there was no more, let's call it the identity of Karen. And literally I could perceive everything as frequencies. And I I knew, and it, it, honestly, if you'd watched me from the outside, you would have thought I was nuts because I was laughing in my body because I couldn't believe that I'd forgotten that I was part of everything and everything was part of me. And then I cried because I couldn't believe that I'd forgotten such a fundamental truth. And then I was, like I said, in this sea of frequencies and I just knew that I could shift things. I don't know how I knew it, I, I just did. And at some point after being in this space for a very long time, I came back into my body in the sense of, what does that mean? It's not like I was floating around the ether. I mean, it was like my consciousness, the seat of my consciousness was a, a back in my body in, in terms of my awareness. So I was aware of the, you know, more aware of the couch and the what was happening in the little condo. And I, when I opened my eyes, I was like, wow, it's kind of dark. That's weird. You know, because I'd started in the morning. I'm like, okay, we're random. And I looked at the clock. And I was like, oh my God, it's been nine hours. And I, I mean, I didn't plan it. And then because I was in Sedona, I literally would go on hikes and I would go on hikes and I could see the illusion. I was like, it's like I can put my hand, right. it's like the matrix, like literally. You can put your hand right through the thing. I was like, that is crazy and amazing. And this illusion is not to punish us. It's here for us to grow from, to, to become as magnificent as, like that is our nature. And I could, it was just this, like, it was like, I was like, I couldn't believe how amazing it was. And I realized I could still perceive frequencies. I was like, I didn't expect to, and I could still perceive them. And then a friend who, I, who overlapped with me for 12 hours, who I hadn't seen in like eight years, happened to stop by. And when she started to talk to me about some kind of problem she was having, I was like, do you want help with that? And that's how it began. Wow. Wow. So that's how it all began. Oh my gosh. After I I don't think I had connected those dots for that that epic experience and then the beginning of everything that you're doing now. But you know, you mentioned something in there where you you were able to perceive the frequencies and more than that you were in this sea of frequencies, but you had this knowing that you would be able to shift things. And uh -huh. so I want to tie this in because all of this has been in part leading up to something I know our listener would love to be able to do, which is to manifest a yeah. whatever they want in their life. And yeah. so I know yeah. that frequencies are a big part of this. And yeah. so I know that you've come up with this, not just manifestation, but quantum manifestation. So that this is beyond like, I've got a vision board up. I've done a mind movie before. <laughs> I've done affirmations before, but this yeah. is not what you're talking about with quantum no. manifestation. This is like the next level. So talk yeah. to us about how frequencies interplay with manifestation and what you're talking Absolutely. about at the quantum level. Yeah. So I have been fascinated by manifestation for like decades. I mean, come on. You can manifest who anything. Yeah. Well, who, come on. It's yeah, like magic. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, yeah. please. And, you know, and there are always those people, you know, those people who they're always like super lucky and things always turn out for them. And like, you're like, why can't I get some of that? Damn it. <laughs> I mean, those yeah. irritating people that you're supposed to be happy for them. Anyway, so what's happening? All right. So everybody focuses with manifestation on the method, right? There's this like, obsession, like these are the steps. This is what you're going to do. This is you have the mind movie and the affirmations and blah, blah, blah. The vision board, et cetera. I've done all that stuff. Okay. So I, I, I totally, I totally know all of it. So anyway, here's the thing. It doesn't matter what the method is. If you've got distortion patterns running, okay, that are of low self-worth, non-deserving, uh, that any number of things, okay, around affluence, getting what you want, um, being able to be powerful enough to manifest, there's like a whole host of distortion around that. 
And so it doesn't matter what you, like the method, because here you are, right? Like we all think we're these, these clear signals, like beaming like a radio tower into the universe. And we're just going to cast out into the universe what it is that we would like to manifest. Okay, here's the real scoopy dough. You have all these distortion patterns between you and the universe. Okay, so here you are thinking you're this clear broadcast, but really it's like, right? From all the distortion patterns. So what is the universe here? They're like, it's like, uh, what? <laughs> it's like what 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 was that right and then you get this thing back that either doesn't stick or it requires a lot of work or it's in like a lesser form that you hoped or it happens to your friend not you so you know what i mean like that kind of weird distortion comes up why because of the distortion in your field so first of all you need to clear the distortion around manifestation and receiving what it is that you want so that's the first thing the second thing is that with the most of the methodologies, because I can't claim to know all of them. So with most of them, they're from the level of the mind, right? So in the sense of like, I'm and emotion. So I'm going to feel the thing as if it's complete. And then I'm going to have the gratitude and the joy of experiencing that thing. And then it's going to come into form. Okay, so that's using emotion to raise your resonance right? So that you can have a higher resonance in order to manifest more clearly. Because Annie's heard me say this many times before. Everything in your life, everything comes down to how high your frequency resonance is. Everything, including your thoughts, your emotions, what your body looks like, who's around you, who you get to collaborate with, how much abundance you have. The higher you vibrate, the more clearly you can manifest. So emotion can get you to a certain level of resonance, right? Feeling good makes us rise in our resonance. Just think about it. If you're happier, you're lighter in feeling. If you're sad, depressed, or pissed off, lower in feeling, right? I think it's a pretty clear thing. So the thing is about quantum manifestation, it is using the frequency resonance of the quantum, which is beyond the mind, which will allow your resonance to be much higher. So now you have the rocket fuel combination of releasing your distortions and your resonance being so much higher. So that way you can manifest more clearly, more efficiently, and more consistently. So that's what quantum manifestation is. And that's why it's so new. It's changing the paradigm of how manifestation works. Okay. So I just wanted to give a quick example of this in my personal life, two different ways that I tried to manifest something. One that was the quote old fashioned way that took me years, years. I remember back when I first, when we first started this business, I wanted to manifest a house with a view and I did vision boards. I did a mind movie. I'd watch that thing every day, set to music, try to think good thoughts for years, nothing. And one day, this was in 2021, um, my, one of my coaches at the time heard about this, this dream of mine. And she said, well, but wait a second. Um, so because I said, well, I want this thing, but I don't think I deserve it because I'd be throwing all my money out the window. And how lame would that be? I'm in real estate. I know it's got to be more practical than that. We're talking bedrooms and space and, you know, all these luxury things, not the, the view. I'm just throwing my money out the window. And she said, well, but if you had that house, would you be able to do your best work in that house? And in that moment, my distortion pattern at that time became super clear to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've been holding myself back. And I was giving out that signal that was like, <laughs> and I thought it was so clear. I want this house with a view, but I was holding myself back because I didn't think I deserved it. And so mm -hmm. as soon as I cleared that, I kid you not, this was the height of the real estate market here in the, in the States in summer of 2021 within three months after that we were in this house this is a house i've talked about many times on this show the top of the hill we have sweeping views of the bay area i can see four bridges from my windows it is better than anything i could have imagined and it was because i cleared that distortion pattern that it was able to come through versus i you know, I did that quantum manifestation workshop with you, by the way, listener, Karen has a ton of really great deep dives on all sorts of topics, including quantum manifestation. I highly recommend it. But after doing that, um, that workshop with you, I tried to manifest something very small, a free cup of coffee. And um, 
I, I was like, I'm doing all the things. I went into the coffee shop, didn't get the free cup of coffee because I was expecting it. And that's the other piece, mm -hmm. right? You have to <laughs> be neutral about it. You have to release your attachment to it. And so I thought, this doesn't work, this whole quantum manifestation <laughs> thing. Karen doesn't know what she's talking about. It's not working. And uh, so I let it go. I said, this cup of coffee is not going to come to me. So forget it. You know, I gave it a try. It's not going to come. But the next time we went to that same coffee shop, I got not just a cup of coffee. One of the people working there came by with an entire tote bag full of branded goodies for me, including a travel mug, uh, these uh, Bluetooth speakers, a <laughs> dog bowl for my dog, like all these things way beyond the free cup of coffee that I could mm -hmm. have um, envisioned. And so that's what happens, right? Is mm -hmm. if you make that signal clear and you let it go, something far better than what you had originally intended often is what comes back. And that's the magic of not just manifestation, but quantum manifestation. Yeah, totally. I love that story because it was what I love about that story is that you recognize that you're attached. So that's what I'm saying. Self-awareness is so important. It's like I'm attached to when the shows up, right? Because you went into the coffee shop the first time. You're like, okay, someone's going to give me my free cup of coffee because I manifested it yesterday. So therefore, linearly speaking, it's going to show up today, right? But then you gave up your attachment to timing. And you gave up attachment to how it's going to look and what it should look like. And then when you'd forgotten about it, ta-da, here it is. I love that story because it's such a power, because to me, it indicates such a powerful shift that you did, which was important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Karen, you know that I could talk about this all day long. I listen to all of everything that you put out. And I've been on all your retreats, will continue to be on all your retreats. I invite the listener to join us. But anyway, before we get into how the listener can follow up with you and try a GFC and learn more about all that you're doing, we're going to move into the final part of our show, our Life and Money Show Spotlight Round. We're going to ask you three okay. questions we ask all our guests. Karen, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> awesome. Our first question is about your life and money. So share with us one thing that you're doing to live a meaningful and intentional life by design. I raise my frequency resonance consistently. And I say that because, as I said before, how high your frequency resonance dictates everything. So the clearer and higher your frequency resonance is, the more you have experiences of abundance that you aren't even anticipating, the more clarity you have with regards to decisions that you need to make that are, yes, somewhat intellectual, but there's like a feeling sense and you learn to trust that. The more collaboration comes in, the more that you get um, to have people in your life that start to help to raise not only you up, but everyone else up around you. So to me, an intentional life is in part, not just like what it is that you want with your mind, but it has to do with living at the highest resonance of who you can be. And I just want to speak to that trust part because I was telling somebody about this and their jaw dropped that on the Scotland retreat that we were recently on, I was telling this person, it's like, yeah, and we'd go to places that Karen had never been to. And there were 50 of us and Karen would just kind of put her antenna up and be like, I don't quite know where we're going. I think it's somewhere around here. We're going, <laughs> oh, not quite here. Let's keep going. And that level of trust Wow. It is just, I mean, it's mind blowing that level of trust. Yeah. And I, that's something I aspire to for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I can imagine at that level of trust, all these things start to come in. Totally. And I would just like to say that I was a total control freak before. Okay. So yeah. the my point is like, I'm not, it's not just me, right? Like, and it's like the journey is yours, but like, I used to like, I had, you know how they have like a five-year plan. I had like a 10-year plan. Right. And then I would break it down. Like I had like the plan <laughs> and it would be really, I would have all our weekends booked. I knew exactly what was happening at all times. All right. And so to be able to go into this space where it's like, okay, I know that I'm following what serves the greatest good by following the highest resonance and trusting that that is going to happen is something to me, which is amazing and a wonderful thing to experience and kind of this like hilarious cosmic joke too, right? Because <laughs> I never know what's going to happen until it's happening. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> very different. <laughs> That's amazing. 
All right. Second question is about others, life and money. So share with us one life or money hack. And by hack, we mean a tip, a tool, a resource, even a book, anything that has helped you on your journey that you think will help others as well. Right. So I know I'm supposed to give like a, a, a tip. And so here's my tip. Release your distortion patterns. Begin. Just begin to release your distortion patterns because there is so much freedom when you experience it. And it does seem like magic. And it is kind of the, the the most epic of all hacks. Because if you can release the thing that triggers you, that keeps you stuck, that keeps you spinning in a place of feeling out of control or fearful or in scarcity, that's like the greatest hack of all. Because then how you feel about everything changes. And then what you get to experience also changes. So I would say release your distortion patterns. And how you do that is you simply begin by listening to a GFC. And that's it. Go ahead, Susan. I, I was going to say my first question after this after this whole interview was going to be like, and where do you begin? Like, how do you actually release these distortion patterns? Because as you're talking, I'm like, oh, I kind of like got hit by one of the trucks that you're talking about just like three <laughs> days ago at the end yeah. of the day. <laughs> And for no good reason, like it wasn't a bad day, like what? And so I, I think that like releasing the patterns, because I have these days every once in a while, and I'm sure the listener does too, where things just like don't work in every department of life. And it is like brick walls are just being slammed down in front of you mm -hmm. in many different ways. And and it doesn't make sense. And I think that for me, that's what clicked in that like, oh, these distortion patterns don't have to make sense. Like they don't have to be, right. it's not like something that's clearly related to an action in my life, but it's like, now I can understand mm -hmm. that, oh, that's probably a distortion pattern because it doesn't make sense or because mm -hmm. it's limiting me in ways that don't make sense. Yeah. So it's like, it doesn't matter what you throw at it, right? It doesn't matter how much uh, how much money you throw at it, how much work you do with it, how much time you spend on it, how much you talk about it. It doesn't matter. It's like, you just keep hitting the wall and you're like, okay, well, I'm doing the work. So what, 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 what the hell, you know, basically. And so that's how you know you're hitting a distortion pattern. Yeah. All right. And our third question is about uh, life and money and the world. So share with us one thing that you're doing to help make the world a better place, whatever that means to you. Yeah. So I would say uh, it, it I, things on spirit level are actually quite simple. So my answer is to raise my frequency resonance, because whether you're aware of it or not, you have a ripple effect into the world. So meaning how high your frequency resonance impacts, of course, the people around you. And when they have that impact, whether it's positive or negative, it ripples out to the people they're in contact with and so on and so on. So how high my frequency resonance really matters as does yours. I mean, just think about it, right? Like if you're having like a really horrible, crappy day and then you snap at your kid, now their day is crappy and they go to their you know, school and they're like mean to some other kid. And now that kid's mean to someone else and they throw attention with their parent who now then gets stressed out. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, it doesn't matter if it's bad or if it's good. So the thing is, let's use the power of that for something that is of a higher resonance. And the other thing that I'm doing is helping others to by giving tools and by giving the GFCs and all of the information we give to to raise theirs. How do you, imp like my, my purpose is to empower and to catalyze a rise in consciousness, period. And so I'm not here to save you. I'm here to help you understand how to save yourself so that when you do the work, you are the one who's free, right? And no one did it for you. You did it. And that is something I think that is irreplaceable and extraordinarily powerful. I think that was one of the biggest game changers when I found your work is with all the other personal development work that I've done, it always seemed just for me, you know, I was investing in this retreat or taking this course and I was like, oh, here goes another few thousand dollars and I'm spending on this. But with the work, uh, with the work that you do, it's very clear to me that it's, it's in service to others. I'm not just spending this money on myself. I'm investing this in my ripple effect out in through our clients, through our investors, through my community, through my family. And that is the greatest gift to me and to the people around me. Yeah. And so Karen, I know we've only skimmed the very top surface of all that you do. And I know our listeners are going to want to go and follow up and, and try a GFC. Guys, 
Karen has, this is part of what she ripples out into the world. She offers a free GFC at the end of each podcast episode that she does. And so you, there's hundreds of them that you can try right now for free. So Karen, tell them if, if the listener does want to um, follow up and try, so, uh, try a GFC and learn more, what's the best place that they can go? Yeah. So you can find uh, me at sphericalluminosity.com and you can uh, watch our podcast from there, which as Annie said, we have over 200 episodes at the end of each episode. There's a free GFC. So you can just search by like the topic if you want. We also offer um, two free workshops if you're interested. And one of them is the Quiet Your Mind uh, workshop in GFC because I mean, the world uh, needs that right now. There's a lot to be worried about. You know, things are uh, blowing up at an accelerated rate, it seems like, in our world today. And so there's a lot to worry about. And I feel like quieting your mind is something that is really helpful. Like you said, Annie, before, that stillness, that centeredness, it's it's such a relief. I, we've had so many people write in just saying, thank you, because <clears throat> it just turned down the volume of all those thoughts that are spinning around in my head. So there's that. And then um, you can also uh, find a free workshop on discovering the six essentials for having a soul-connected, juicy relationship. So those are free workshops you can find on our web website. It's fericalluminosity.com. And I can also send you a link for the Quieting Your Mind workshop, too, if you want that directly. Amazing. Karen Chong, founder of Spherical Luminosity, catalyst for rising consciousness, visionary guide, writer, podcaster, and unwavering champion for humanity. Karen, thank you so much for being here with us and our audience today. Thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. All right. Well, that is our show for today. Thank you so much for listening to The Life and Money Show, the show all about helping you to live a meaningful and intentional life by design. And hopefully through the work that Karen does with frequency work, you'll start to be able to get even deeper into what that life by design looks like for you. For show notes or to listen to previous episodes, go to lifeandmoneyshow.com. And of course, for more information on how to invest with us to create passive income and build wealth for your family, go to goodegginvestments.com. Till next time, remember that your financial journey is a lifelong adventure, and we're here with you every step of the way. Thanks for listening. <laughs>